So before I get into it, again, like we've said for the past few weeks, if you want one of these shirts, we are selling these now on tryingdigital.com. You guys keep asking us about them. We have these, we have the filmmaker shirt, we have the aspect ratio shirt, a lot of sh basically stuff that I wanted to wear. So we made them and made them available for you as well. So if you do wanna check those out, link in the notes below for you for that. But today I wanted to take a look at something that I see overlooked a lot by filmmakers just starting out and something that I know I definitely overlooked when I was starting out and honestly still find myself struggling with every now and then when I get into the edit, and that is transitions. And of course, what I'm talking about is moving from one moment to another, one scene to another, jumping in time, whatever it is, how you choose to move from one place to the next will have a massive effect on your audience. And I think understanding the power of the transition or the lack thereof will help in crafting the intended experience for that audience. And for me, one of the kings of transitions is Edgar Wright. It's clear that Edgar Wright puts a ton of thought into his transitions, creating these fluid moments that move us through his story exactly as he intended. And if you want a hyper dose of that, just go watch Scott Pilgrim versus the world. It is just transition overload. But there are a ton of great ones in Shot of the Dead, Hot Fuzz, and World's End as well. What I love about his transitions is the careful detail to the majority of them, be it screen direction, speed of the move, or just the slamming of the cut. There's a fluidity that it adds to the film, keeping a solid forward momentum, not slowing the pace at all. Of course, that's not always going to be what you want. Sometimes your scene just needs something as simple as a hard cut. But let's take a look at how much of a difference a transition makes, especially stylistically. And for that, we're gonna take a look at two extremes to emphasize the point. Both are moments from Scott Pilgrim that happened pretty early on in the film. Can I get back to you on that? I do not wanna be here at all. Can I get back to you on that? I do not wanna be here at all. Your fake high school girlfriend to the library a half hour ago? What? It's like six in the morning. It's weird. What's weird? Your fake high school girlfriend to the library a half hour ago? What? It's like six in the morning. It's weird. What's weird? Of course, we're cutting out a lot to get rid of the transition, but the whole function of what was removed was for the transition, adding in heavy style and moving you through the story while boosting its tone. Again, these are extreme examples, heavy in style and specific to this film, but there's a lot to learn here. Even if we look at very simple examples like a time jump cut, such as this one from Hereditary. For me, this was a jarring brick wall of a transition, just a hard cut on a matched frame that showed the passage of time in almost almost a startling way. So really the lack of a transition is what worked so well here. But now I wanna take a look at some of the most common types of transitions that you can use for your own film. Starting with one of the most simple and common, a fade or cross dissolve, which this is exactly what you think it is. One image dissolving into another or a fade to black, then back in. For me, these are the most dangerous transitions. You really need to make sure that this choice is right for the moment. Otherwise, you risk having a moment that feels cheesy or is an obvious cheap cover up for the lack of thought put toward a proper transition for that moment. Of course, these are used often and can definitely be the right choice. I'm just always very cautious with these so I don't end up having an accidental hallmark moment on my hands. Next, we have wipes. Of course, there are the obvious types of wipes that you see in Star Wars, but those are not what I'm talking about. And 99.9% .9 of the time, a screen wipe like that is not the right choice. It is for Star Wars, but almost never for your your film. Just for, if you want to burn it, throw it in a fire, leave it to Star Wars. Everything's perfectly all right now. We're fine. We're all fine here now. Thank you. What I'm talking about is a hidden wipe that moves you into another scene, usually by using something in the foreground, like someone walking by the lens in these shots from Scott Pilgrim or this subtle car wipe from Shaun of the Dead. I've used this technique in one of my first public short films called Tell. I have this character move from inside to outside. The shot follows him until we are looking out the window to continue the scene. With a massive lack of crew and the need to move my audio setup, I decided to do this in two and create a wipe right where we are moving past the edge of the window. So really it's connecting two shots to appear as one. It's not technically the transition that we've been talking about, but it is still the same concept since we are transitioning from inside to outside. Otherwise I would have had to have a complete cut and it would have broke the momentum I was trying to create. So these concepts really can be effective in a lot of ways. But pulling this specific transition off is insanely simple. In your first scene, have an object or actor move past the lens and then use them to create a wipe using a mask that will sweep across revealing the scene behind it. 
easy. Extra points if you include matched moves in both shots. Next, we're taking a dip back into the realm of incredibly easy with a cutaway, one of the most used and often very useful. A recent example from my own work would be the cut to the establishing shot of the house outside from There Comes a Knocking. It's a very common sort of move to make, but the right one for this moment. We start inside during the day, then jump to outside at night, jumping time and establishing the location that we haven't yet. But also we're using this moment to pull back and build on tone before moving back in. But the transition doesn't stop there. After that, we cut to a close up of a wine glass and wine being poured. Then we pull out again on the action of her moving back with that glass. So these three shots and the motion of our actress were all thought of before time as a way to move out of the last scene and into this next one. And like we did with those other shots from Scott Pilgrim, let's take a look at what it would feel like to remove all those transitional elements and jump from one scene right to the next. I know we said we wouldn't get it, but it was begging me, and I know you wanted it too, so yes, it's expensive. I'll take another shift or something. I just figured it would look great at the end of the hall. And again, this is a very basic and very simple way to transition us into another scene, but because we gave it proper thought ahead of time, it works to move us to a new time and setting smoothly while building on tone and character. Next up, we have the whip pan, which of course, the first thing that I think of with a whip pan is whimsical or a comedic sort of use. But you also see this a lot in moments of action, you know, things like sports movies or just general action movies to help us move from one shot to another and keep that momentum going. Obviously, this is done just by, you know, move, moving the camera. So, moving on. Next, we have one I love but rarely use, and that is cutting on action. This could be done in many ways, but the general idea is to connect two shots by matching or following through the action at the end of one shot and the start of the next. Going back to Scott Pilgrim and Edgar Wright again, you can see he does this a lot, often in very simple ways. One character turning in a scene, and then we get the rest of that turn in the next shot in a whole new scene and a whole new location. But you can find this idea pretty much everywhere. But it doesn't have to be a specific movement that connects these either. You can use similar ideas in more conceptual ways. Like for instance, the script I'm currently working on has one character about to be killed. Just as the violence starts, we cut to a new location and the idea would be something like this. So we connect two completely different things with a concept, the splattering of blood, but then the surprise is it's just ketchup. You're doing something very specific when you make this thoughtful transition. You are letting the audience know what sort of film they're in and you're winning over their confidence that you have this all in hand. And the last one I wanted to point out is sound. Instead of a visual transition, you bridge your two moments, time or location with sound that guides us into our new thing. I'd say this is a technique that I personally use the most 99% of the time it is a planned thing but there are always times where I mess something up and I have to fix it one of the thousand things you have to solve in post-production and sound is almost always that savior for me this can be as simple as starting the sound for the next scene early or a rising tone that brings you into the next shot an example that was planned from one of my films comes from there comes a knocking Here the idea was to start pulling the tone away from sadness of the current scene and start pulling it toward the horror film. So in this moment, that rising and tonal shift brings us to that moment that we finally slam into, which is what I like to call our welcome to the horror movie moment. Again, a very simple technique, but one that was planned before we ever shot a single frame. Now, of course, sound is a large factor in almost all transitions, especially pretty much every transition Edgar Wright does. But for this specific one, I'm talking about the moments that sound is the entire transition. But all in all, you have everything from very elaborate transitions involving in-camera effects and visual effects, all the way down to very simple transitions with just a cut or some audio to carry it. The main thing here is to just have it in mind while you're prepping your film. So while you're editing that thing in your head before you ever get on set, don't forget to add those transitions, making sure they're the right ones for your film that will carry your audience through the story as you intended. So that's it for today. And if you like the music in today's episode, 
episode and most of our episodes, actually definitely check out Musicbed. They're one of our favorite places to go and get licensed music and it was super cheap very easy to use, very friendly towards YouTube creators. So definitely check out the link in the notes below to jump on that. Until next time, don't forget to write, shoot, edit, repeat.